hey, I'm Rob. And I'm Shannon. Welcome to Build Up, the show about shows between the shows. We've got Tim Kennedy here to talk about Discovery's Hard to Kill. Yeah, Tim Kennedy is one tough guy. He's putting himself in some of the most risky and extreme jobs imaginable, where one mistake could be deadly. Yes, and we want to help keep everyone safe by sharing some of our personal survivor Survival tips. tips. So you know what? Let's hit the... The audience. Let's hit just the audience. Help them out. Let's give them some of our survival oh, tips. Yeah. I love surviving. Yeah. That's how I'm alive right now. Ooh, let's come down <laughs> and see who's here. Oh, Ooh, wow. Hi. I'm just going to sandwich right up here because wow. this is a great zone. I think, is there room for me too? Oh, yeah, Can I, I think so. Let's over here, maybe this. right here. Oh, okay, yeah. how's that? This is great. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, he said that was great. <laughs> I'm going to bump these people more often. <laughs> Hey, Rob, you hey. got some survival tips? Yeah, I got a survival tip, all right? Here's one. If you ever drop a piece of food on the floor, you don't want to waste it, right? So I say it's okay to eat it. Just make sure no one saw you pick it up and eat it, you know? Because that's probably the more dangerous thing. It's getting caught. Yeah. Survival oh, tips! Yeah. Yeah. My survival tip is that you should definitely learn how to astral project your soul out of your body if you're in danger and put it into a doll body like Chucky. Because Chucky never dies. Isn't that true? He's always living. Always living. Yeah, he can't die. And he's just waiting for his soul to find a little boy's body to put his soul into. You know, don't you love those scenes when Chucky's like over a little kid like ah, 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 ah. No, you don't? Oh, she, wow, she's not a Chucky fan. That's so weird. You look like a Chucky fan to me. Uh, survival survival tips. tips! Oh, man, I'm still thinking about that piece of food I ate from the floor earlier. Whoops. No one was supposed to know about that. So uh, here's another survival tip. If you're in a conversation with someone and you happen to zone out, you don't hear what they said, you kind of miss the whole thing, instead of, like, asking them to repeat it, just be like, oh, yeah, wow, that's crazy. And then just, like, sing one of your favorite 80s cartoon theme songs. Wow, that's crazy. Survival, survival tips! Tip. Woo! The best survival tip definitely for me is... Uh, Watch all the Final Destination movies, just nonstop, you know, so you can get all your paranoia juices just flowing because death is everywhere and you must be prepared, okay? This mic should just explode and blow you both up. Are you okay with that, Chucky fan? Yay. <laughs> oh, see, she's a Chucky fan. <laughs> Survival tip! Woo! This actually is literally a tip. If you want to really have a clean nose, don't worry about using a like Kleenex or whatever. In the morning, take a Q-tip. Clean the inside of your nose with a Q-tip. This is mind blowing. It will change your life. You'll be breathing so much more, which is, you know, actually like the point of life is to breathe. And you'll start every day off perfectly because you just clean out your nose with a Q-tip. It's, it's incredible. Have you ever tried that? No, I never have, but I might. It's worth trying. I really think you should. What What's your like favorite nose cleaning method? Saline water. Whoa, saline water? Now that's something I didn't think of yet. So maybe you just gave me the survival, survival tip. tip. Whoa, yeah. yeah. Man, I really feel like my nostrils are pretty clunky and junked up right now. I didn't Q-tip them this morning. <sighs> I feel ashamed. But another survival tip is Befriend all the animals of the streets and then make them idolize you and protect you nonstop. So if you're ever in danger, they can come to your aid. Like Lawrence Fishburne in John Wick 2. He's like the king of the pigeons. Or the pigeon lady from Home Alone 2. She also has pigeons who do her work. Or Danny DeVito. He's also, when he would play the penguin, had birds just defend him. So if you make friends with the birds, the birds will protect you. Do you have any friends that are birds? Uh, no, I love dogs, actually. <laughs> Oh, wow, you love dogs. Yeah. That's cool. Woof, woof. Oh. Woof, woof, woof. Oh, ma'am, we have a dog right here. I think it's a love connection. <laughs> there you go. It's a love connection. Woo. It's also a survival, survival tip. How are you guys doing? Hi. Doing, doing good, doing good. Uh, oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. What's your name? <laughs> My name's Earl, like the TV show. Oh, I like how you have that prepared so that we're not missing it. Because some people say, like, what did you say? Earn? Uh, Urk, Urkel, Herbal. 
when I when I'm at a party and I say my name, my name is Rob, but sometimes people just hear Ralph. That's Isn't it awful? I've got a survival tip for you. Don't look at your cell phone. Don't do it. Survival tip! Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I actually saw Rob fall up down the stairs once because he was looking at his phone, so that's a real survival tip that he's giving you. You know, another survival tip is buy all your clothes two sizes too big. Then take a bunch of loose leaf paper and crumple them up and then shove them in there. So it's like a little protective layer that'll help you, you know, like fight off bruises and bad vibes. It's a good one, right? Good. Good. Do you have yeah, it's a paper? Like the Geico commercial where they have the bubble wrap all over the restaurant. Hey, yeah, you know what? I think I stole that idea. I'm a hack. That's good. Oh, stealing is good? Excellent. <laughs> Better than paying, right? Yeah, that's true. If it's for free, it's for me. That's what my dad always says. <laughs> you can have that motto now, that. too. Right. If it's free, it's for me. Hey, there you go. Are you my dad? Oh, could be. Could be. Could be. <laughs> could be. Oh, all right. Now we know what you've been up to. You're like, I don't know if I have kids or not. <laughs> Survival tip! You know, if you're ever stuck in the city because, like, the train broke down or something like that, and you're just, like... It's sweating, it's so hot, you're stuck, you don't know what to do, you're tired, what do you gotta do? You gotta kill time. Just head on to Crate and Barrel and uh, try out the couches. Maybe bring an iPad, catch a flick. Just enjoy that cool AC, take a nap. You know, it's a good idea, right? You do that? I do that, yeah. I yeah. fantasize in there, you know. <laughs> Yay, we have a Crate and Barrel fan right here. Survival, Survival tip! tip. Oh, man, this has been really fun, but I have one more survivor tip for you, survival tip. If you're walking alone at night and you're feeling a little bit scared, you know, just start acting like a WWE wrestler and be like, who's ready for this? Because I'm ready to taste some human flesh. And then no one's going to want to mess with you. Trust me, because I do that every night. Survival oh, tip! tip. Woo! Woo. Oh, man. Thank you so much for this friendship. Thanks so much. I hope you guys enjoyed yeah. those tips. I hope everyone learned that was as much great. as I did. Oh, oh thank you. Thank We're you. getting we compliments. Gotta, We're not we even done with the show. And the, the fans can't just help but give us compliments. But, you know, we have to go backstage yeah. because Tim Kennedy is here. Oh, my gosh. I am excited. This is exciting. I love walking backwards. Yep, yep, yep. I'm not oh, there good at is. doing dangerous things. Tim I'm impressed Kennedy. by anyone. Hey, hey what's, what's up? up? How you doing? Okay. Oh, here's a mic. Oh, oh yeah, cool, we were cool. just gonna come over here and try to kill you. No, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna put <laughs> the microphone down. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh no, no. You have to hold the mic. It's we're making it harder. You want me to kill you with the microphone? Oh, if you want to. Whoa, that. is that an offer? I, <laughs> well, we just met. Coming from someone else, I'd be like, a lot. <laughs> that's a funny joke. But coming from you, I'm genuinely scared because yeah. you could really yeah. do it. I could. I mean, this this microphone would work well. Mm -hmm. That's a threat. Oh, would you trauma. stab with the bottom, or are you taking this I little? I just like, like just, just oh boy. bash my Bludgeon. head in. Well, Bludgeon great, name. awesome. Okay. I'm so excited. So you have a show called Hard to Kill. Yes. Dan and I were thinking about starting a show called Easy to Kill. Yes. What do you think about that. Yeah. Yeah, because we're very soft. I don't know if you can see my arms. They're spaghetti. There's yeah. zero muscles on my back. You both I look crack amazing. when I try to oh, dance. Thank you. I just make yeah. cracking noise. Well, the, the, yeah. The, the first title of the show is going to be like, um, an idiot that's too dumb to die. Oh. Um, and then they're like, ah, oh, we don't like that. And they're like, a stupid guy that just won't end up in the dirt. I'm and then they, they finally ended up with a hard to kill. I mean, oh, hard yeah. to go. I like it. It's short, it's catchy. Yeah. Stupid guy trying to go on the ground, but not yet. See you later. He's but I think that's alive. more apt. So I think that's more descriptive. Like, it's not a misnomer. It's clearly understood that I'm dumb and that I should be dead at this point. We're all in agreement that you're dumb and cool. you should be dead. Yeah. Right. Great, great, great. Right. But we're happy you're alive. Yes. Yeah. Because you're here. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're here. Okay. Yeah. And for everyone just tuning in, this has been Build Up, the show about shows between the shows. If you want to continue the fun, head Woo. to buildseries.com right now to see Tim Kennedy talk about <laughs> discoveries hard to kill. There he Whoa, goes. He's, He's just going done. down. <laughs> What is up? Welcome to Build. 
I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our next guest, man, is one tough dude. He's an active Ranger-qualified Green Beret Special Forces sniper who has served tours in Iraq, Afghanistan, and other locations around the globe. He's also a top-five professional MMA fighter, and now he's ready to tackle some of the craziest jobs ever. He is literally risking life and limb to highlight the unsung heroes of the American workforce in his new series, Hard to Kill, which is uh, premiering July 31st at 10 p.m. on Discovery. Here to tell us all about this insane show, the great Tim Kennedy's in the house. How about that, folks? Come on, make some noise for Tim. He can hear you. Uh, we're gonna bring him out in just a second, but before we do, I believe we have a quick look at a scene from the show, so let's go ahead and run that clip. An experimental test pilot. I mean, that is one that comes with this inherent risk. Absolutely. Taking a chunk of metal and putting it up in the air is not normal. That's crazy. Yeah. And while it's so normal to you, um, it's extraordinary to me. There's so many things that could go wrong. Why do you do it? I mean, this was a rad program, right? Having two jet engines on an airplane that weighs 600 pounds, that's cool, man, because it's about pushing the limits of aviation. That's the dream. So much of what it takes to survive this job is about processing information as you're hurtling through space at hundreds of miles an hour, upside down. And if you can't keep up, you could die. As someone who's never flown before, the first step is get in the cockpit and get in the sky. Parachute. The call out is bailout, bailout, bailout. If you hear those words, the joke is by the time I say it the third time, it'll be an echo, because I'll be gone. So don't ask for help, because I won't be there. Initially, in this airplane, it's just going to be basic stuff, just holding altitude, holding heading, keeping track of the airplane. This is my introduction. This is Tim's crash course in flying. That T-6 Texan is pretty sweet. Classic plane. Just about every pilot since World War II has cut their teeth in it. Because it's low tech, it's perfect for teaching beginners the basics. Grab here, make sure you don't fall off the far side, and I'll help you from there. Why yellow? Because uh, it's a trainer. So yellow indicates trainer? Yeah, just easier to find the wreckage. <laughs> All right, so this maneuver we're going to do is a roll. I think that's so much fun. <laughs> All right, you want to try a loop? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to give you the controls once we get on that opposite heading. Wait, am I doing this first one? You think you can do it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to push the nose down, and we're going to accelerate to 140 knots on your airspeed indicator. We're going to pull the nose through the horizon until your feet are just about on the horizon. Does that make sense? Yes. And you're going to watch the horizon come around. Yep, and I don't need anything besides the stick, right? There's no throttle, there's no... I'll take care of everything else. OK. All right, show it to me. You have control. Get that uh, airspeed up. My goodness, Tim Kennedy, everybody. Make some noise. There you go, yes. Um, Damn. I'm so excited you're here, man. I, I got a chance to see that whole episode. I'm excited I'm here as well. I, yeah, exactly. Well, I was going to say, I'm made of questions, dude. I usually start these things by saying congratulations on the show, but I feel like in this instance, uh, congratulations on being not dead because the things that you do in just the one episode that I saw, it is absolutely wild. I, I want to dive into it, but very, very quickly first, just how is the world of Tim Ken? How are you doing, man? How's Tim right now? How's New York going? How's life? Uh, New, New York is kind of out of my realm of expertise um, as I'm wearing a dead ostrich on my feet. Um, you know, it's, uh, I like space. I like, um, it's hard to free fall here. It's hard to, um, you know, just hop in the ocean, go scuba diving. It's hard to uh, fight a bear, um, to get set on fire alive inside of a plane. You know, these aren't things that are commonplace in New York. Wouldn't you, know? you, but wouldn't you be a little tired of that after filming this show? Aren't, isn't it nice <laughs> to not, not be in a plane on fire? Isn't there a part of you that enjoys a non-flammable plane once like a in a while? a boring part. Yeah, yeah like okay, part fair that enough. I wouldn't want to be friends with. I'm like, that part, that part's boring. Yeah. I want to I hang out with that stupid dude that always ends up 
with new scars. Well, that's what, you know, watching the show, man, I, I just, I'm curious how it all came about because I feel like it's something that you would have, you had to have thought of this because I can't fathom the phone call where it's like, Tim, we got an idea. I know a new thing you can do. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. You had to have gone, how did it start? Tell me the beginning. So, so the conception was pretty easy. I was working with um, a group on a different project and when they had come to me, they said, hey, we need somebody that can hunt humans and has done it before. So that, that narrowed the field down. And that can speak Spanish, that's worked in South America, that's familiar with ground penetrating radar, and that can fly drones. Um, and I was like, well, okay, I can do those things. Yeah. So it's like me and maybe 40 of my friends that right. fit that mold. Um, having been in 7th Spe Special Forces Group, I spent lots of time in South America. I've obviously hunted people all over the world. And um, so that was cool. And I got to work with this with uh, Carga for three years. And in those three years, they saw me dive to 200 feet on a submarine that no one's ever been on before, ever, you know, in a, in a fjord off of Norway. 200 feet, I'm breathing helium, nitrogen. Um, the dive was about two hours in total time. I had to go to phases to let the nitrogen out of my body. Yeah. Um, so deep dive, technical stuff. And then they saw me scale the side of a cliff and, and um, then fall and not die. <laughs> They're like, so this guy's stupid. Um, <laughs> So at the end of that, they say, well, what can we do? And clearly, I'm unapologetically American. Like, I am, like, I bleed red, white, and blue. Um, and I, I said, woo, woo! Yeah, who said that back there? I like you. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to find a way that I could bring attention to, like, why this country is so special. And, and I wanted to give people access to a world that they can't get any other way. Like, I can go into worlds that very few people can. Like, not a lot of people can jump out of planes at 25,000 feet on, you know, with, on oxygen. I'm one of those guys that can dive down too deep that a body should go because we're not made to be down there. Um, that can be set on fire. They're like, all the stupid things that I will do. But I can give everybody else a chance to see this world. And that world is the fabric of this great country. Like, the people that in Midland, Texas, drill down a few hundred feet with static around them. If they make a mistake, they're going to ignite it and they're all going to die. They're in the middle of the Gulf. Um, they're welding a pipe. If they, there's a negative pressure in this vacuum, if they weld too deep, it's going to suck them in and vaporize them in a heartbeat. You know, a guy flying some antibiotics over the coast of Alaska in the Arctic. Like, he's trying to deliver antibiotics to a family that lives in the bush. You know, like maybe the Palins, cousins or something. Oh, oh my God. Um, and... But they're necessary for like this thing that we call freedom, right? So obviously I've fought for it, I've bled for it, I've been blown up for it, and I really believe in it. And this is a chance for me to show everybody else these courageous, heroic, amazing people that I think go unrecognized. And that's really, that's what's at the heart of the show, right? It's like, yes, here's him doing these crazy things, but really at the end of the day, you're showing off people that do these things every day. Yeah. I'm really curious because I was reading up on you, man. And like I said, when you retired from MMA, you like told your wife, I'm sorry, I chose another profession that's really dangerous, but I'm, I'm done with it. I'm sorry I did that, but that's okay. Well, how would you tell her when you said, don't worry, I'm going to be on TV? And she was like, oh, that's fantastic news. What are you doing? No, so she has no social media accounts. Yeah. She's not misanthropic. She's not like... I generally hate humans, not quite to that de degree, but she definitely doesn't interact with people a lot. Um, she's also brilliant, but there was, um, when I met her, I was already in special forces. I was getting ready to go out of Iraq, and you know, at the time I'd been blown up and I had some, some, some stuff on my neck, and she's like, what's that? I'm like, ah, it was from, you know, a bomb. And she's like, Okay, and this is when we were first dating. Yeah. So she knew what she was signing up for. So right. if she's going to be complaining now and walking into the room and throwing ice packs on the bed and telling me to figure it out, like that's unnecessary. If you're listening, just stop doing that. That's I'm going to ice specific. my knees anyways. Yeah. <laughs> that was oddly specific. I knew that was a thing that had happened before where the ice packs came in and she was like, Don't bring up old done. stuff. And, yeah, Sorry. got it. Bad Sorry. marriage advice. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, so let's move forward then. So you have the conversation. It's happening. Uh, here we are, we're in the show. You mentioned a bunch of them uh, just a moment ago, but how do, you, how do you come up with the list of the jobs, of the places you're going to go? What, where, what does that process look like? So that's it. The easiest part is coming up with the list. We have 100-something jobs at this point that we want to do, um, from deep-sea welders to, um, you know, obviously crab fishermen. We, we covered commercial fishermen, um, race car drivers, uh, EOD border security, um, the list goes on and on and on. The hard part was twofold, the logistics right. uh, and then the insurance. 
Those, <laughs> those two oh, things. Man. Imagine being an underwriter and in comes this hairy handed troll looking guy, you know, that has scars all over his face and there's like melted flesh on his back. And, and he's like, so what we want to do is take a plane. We want to put it in another plane and set that first plane on fire. And then I want to be in that plane strapped to it with my parachute pretty much inaccessible. And then we want to push that burning plane out the yeah. back of the other plane and see if I can not die. Right. And uh, that was really a plan of ours. No. Did they talk you down? Is that because I don't recall so we had, that exact scenario. We had to break that into different parts. Yeah. So like locking me in the plane on fire. It sounds like parts of that made it into the Jumping show. out of the plane in a halo jump. Um, all of those things we separated ultimately because um, they wouldn't let us do it together. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty amazing, though, man. Like, I'm watching, I was saying this backstage, I'm watching this show, and we see a little bit of, in that clip, too, uh, is, is that there's a moment where, uh, even though you know what the plan is, and you know what you're getting yourself into, even you are a little surprised at moments by what's about to happen. Like, my favorite part of that whole clip is when he goes, all right, you want to do a loop? And you're like, yeah, I just did that. That's fun. Let's do a loop. Yeah. And you, you get to watch the wheel spin when he tells you you're going to control the plane, and there's like that moment where like you can't even get the word what out your lips just purse you're like wait what wh what you want me to do it and then you do it right he asks you to do it and you take the stake and it happens what one i love that part of the show and two what the hell is wrong with you that you said yes when he said <laughs> are you ready like what is that part of your brain well maybe it's not the the part that isn't there because what you're saying is as i started the, seeing the wheels turn they were turning very slowly did you notice that <laughs> yeah. yeah so i'm dumb I, I think our takeaway from anybody that is going to be doing these things occupationally at this juncture of their life, they're like, that guy's stupid. You know, um, like he's just too, too dumb to quit at this point. I was, yeah, because I was going to say, we're having fun. You say that a lot, and it's a very charming and endearing qu quality. But to do the things you've done, you're not dumb. I can't allow you to say that you're dumb okay. because there are a lot of calculations. There's a lot of risk assessment. There's a lot of things that go on that happen in a split second. And also the way in which you're able to pick up these directions that you've heard once <laughs> three minutes ago. And it's now like you're in short form. Like <laughs> yeah, he could have exactly. given me some extra direction. You know, like that would have been. Nothing. Thank you, Elliot. Yeah. You know, like, a loop happens like this. That would have been helpful. I mean, Dick. was there... We see you say yes to that. Were there any jobs when you were going through the list and you're narrowing it down where even you had to, st like, uh, like volcano cliff diver? Like, was there anything where you looked at it and you were like, well, nobody walks away from that. Can't do that one. Or was everything on the table? Everything was on the table. I never said no, not one time. We never did a single stunt. And this is not a stunt show. This is not Fear fuck Factor. Um... <laughs> It's the internet. You can say whatever you want. Oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> you can you say anything. Yeah. yeah I, just, I just came from Fox, and they're like, you, you, you can't say, like, they gave me a list. That, I'm like, that's my only vernacular. Like, I can't use any other verbs. You can use those words? <laughs> um, so, no, not one time did I say no. And as a matter of fact, we were pleading, we were imploring on my, on my knees, saying no to do this justice. Because, you know, the show is paying homage to people that really do these jobs every single day. Right? Okay, Tim's a badass. I'm not going to dispute you there. Let me just fix this. Yeah, right. go ahead and pat yourself in. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, but the, I do this job for two weeks to two months. Somewhere between there. depends yeah. on the job, right? They do it for 40 years. It's, it's wild. And that, that three generations, right? I, I, and their whole entire family does it. Well, did it because there were 10 of cousins. Now there's six because four of them died, Jeez. right? Like that is commonplace in these worlds. Com commercial fishermen, test pilots. It's generation after generation and they do it forever and they do it because they love it and they bleed it and they believe it and, they, and there's nothing else that they could possibly do. And the way that they view life is this contagious, real, beautiful, exciting contrast of life and death, pain and pleasure, hot and cold, and it's fucking contagious. Yeah, what would you, like, that's wild when you think of these people that do, because I, I, I was letting the wheel spin in my head on that, that they go in day after day. This is what they do. You get to try it. You get to walk away, survive. Yeah, and you they get go to, see a physical therapist. Exactly. You know? they, like, no, that's seriously. just, did you really have to go yeah, see a physical yeah, therapist? Really. For which, anyone specifically? Or? Like three different ones. Three different, Jesus Christ. Um, I got wrecked by a bull. Did you? Um, oh my God. So it's a 2,000 pound bull that, the first one, he just ran over me. Um, and I weigh 200 pounds, so there's a delta there pretty significantly. <laughs> you know? yeah. And then, um, a bull. Yeah. yeah. And then he, then another bull hooked me. So he took his horns, put it up and threw me in the air. And then, oh yeah. Um, gravity's weird. Is that chair padded enough? Do you need another cushion of some kind after that? Uh, after, is that okay? I, I needed, um, 
less servings of humble pie. That's oh what I needed. God. It was like every day I showed up to work, it was just humiliating, you know, because I think I'm kind of cool. Yeah, um, right? Yeah, I right? You've done, you're a pretty fit dude. You've done some crazy stuff in your lifetime. But like when you're face, face to face with these things, six Gs, seven Gs, that's humbling, man. I, I, I've never experienced it, but I watch you experience but it. But they like, do it effortlessly. That's so it. I'm trying to stay conscious and not crap myself, right? That's <laughs> just back there flat. You good? Goal, goal good number up. one, like, don't piss myself on TV. Oh you know, goal number two, stay conscious. So he's flying, doing everything. Well, he's flying the plane, making sure I'm okay. And he's like talking to the camera and yeah. he's like- Showboating. He's, yeah. He's, <laughs> It's kind it's of nothing. insulting. You know? It's nothing to him. And then and he gets back down there and he's like, yeah, you know, every day they'll, they'll do that. But like they'll do nine G's and they'll do it for like three yep. or four times yep. as long. So on the commercial fishing boat, you know, you watch what is uh, Deadliest Catch. Yeah. Right. And everybody's like, oh, that doesn't look that bad. You're on a boat. Yeah. You're on a Cruise. boat and it's moving. It looks kind of cold. Mm. Fortunately, I have this like, you know, Patagonia jacket. Yeah. You know, I have this cool little necktie. Um, what do they call them here? Scarves. Sure. We don't have them in Texas because it's, you know, Bolo a thousand tie? degrees. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, we have those. You have those in no, Texas. No, Bolo is a different thing. Well, uh, you said neck. <laughs> so the, uh, we, I get on this boat, and the things that you can't understand are the things that can't pass through a screen, right? Um, it's the smell of the boat that has had 60 years of rotting fish. And as you're walking up to the boat, the diesel exhaust is hitting you. And it's mixing with the fresh diesel that they're piling on there. And then the guy is, is, is throwing the fish that they didn't want, but were still down the hold that kind of rotted over the, the day before. So you have like 60 years of rot fish. And then you have like two days of rotting fish. But then you walk through the galley to go talk to the cabin who has a huge char in his mouth of tobacco, right? He's been spitting the same cup for probably two years. And everybody on the boat is smoking Virginia Slims. The weather outside is 26 degrees. There's 10 foot swells. You look at what you're going to have for lunch and it's been sitting in this crock pot for maybe a week, not sure. And that's the beginning of you not sleeping for two weeks. Because the only time you get to sleep is in between poles. Yeah. Like you can't convey that in television. Like there's no way for somebody to understand what that smells like and what that feels like and what it feels like when that water hits your eyes and the wind freezes your eyelid, eyelids closed. You, you are a, a man of conviction. You've done this. You've been through it. A man of incredibly strong will. How quickly into that experience did you just describe? Did you go, what the hell did I get myself into? Yeah, I was like, where do I quit? You know, like yeah, the Navy exactly. SEALs have like a bell that you yeah. ring. I'm like, is there an option to get off this? There's no, where's the show? Short, no? No. Oh. This sucks. So you do, you do have to process that, though. You have Absolutely. to go through that moment because you are, yeah. I was saying while the clip was playing, you're, you're borderline superhuman, but you are human. Like that, ha that emotion occurs in you. You look yeah. around, you go, I need a way out. And then you just have to find your way to this is it. This is life for right now. Everybody's going to see how human I am because yeah. um, this isn't like Tim Kennedy's awesome. This is, well, Tim Kennedy's kind of stupid and vulnerable in everything that he does. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, that's the inside of Tim's body on the outside. E, you know, like, oh, that's what it looks like to get your skin burnt, or that's what it looks like to be completely hypothermic, or that's what it looks like um, to fail. You know, you see me fail. Um, I've never done these jobs before. There's yeah. the training I do, you, I do on camera. Now, you watch me train. And um, in, your, in your conversations with these guys, with, with all these, these individuals, you know, and all these different jobs, and they're doing them for generations, they've done them for years. And I think you kind of tapped into this when you were talking about it just a moment ago, but like, what kind of effect does that have? on their view of the world and on them mentally, like long term of like this, this is, they do this every day. Do they go home and exhale and go, ah, I made it another day. Or like, what is it like after years of doing this long term to, to them? Do you think? They love it. Yeah. I mean, they have a zeal for life that is indescribable. They have this, um, rich, authentic, delicious love for everything, you know, because they, they go without for so long that when they come back and they have the, the contrast of the two, like when I'm in Iraq, all right, I'm in the desert, it's 120 degrees, I'm eating MREs and I'm pooping in a little bag, I'm looking through one scope through a tiny hole for like two months. And that's my world, you know, for, for 60 days. And then you come back and you smell perfume for the first time in six months. Nothing's ever smelled sweeter, right? The first time that you have a real cup of coffee, not an army coffee, like a good cup of coffee. You know, like it's life changing. Like you don't even remember it. And, and everything is like that. And that's what these, that's what the, their life is like every single day. They come back in, all, they come back into shore off of one of these halls or they land their plane, a plane that nobody's ever flown before. You know, there's like that car right there that's passing us. They had a crash test dummy 
the first time that that car moved, yeah. right? And that had sensors all over it. And it's like, oh, let's see what happens when this car moves. Right. And this crash test dummy is like, doo, 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 that's not so bad. You know, beep, 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 beep. Right? You know, crash test dummy yeah, noise. Crash test dummy know. noise. Um, that crash test dummy is a human, yeah. right? Somebody walks up to a plane, it's like, I'll see if it can fly. Right, and then they have to force things to go wrong to understand what they need to do to fix the problems as they occur. So then they start. If the plane flies, which is a miracle, because um, metal is heavier than air. I don't know if you know that. Um, so just the fact that we have crap up in the air is yeah, it's amazing. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. So then they induce failure. They shut off the engine, or they go into a dead spin. That's the wild part when he does that. Yeah, yeah. that's dumb. <laughs> yeah. It's dumb. It is. It is. But it's a hell of a TV show. I'll tell you that much. But who here flies? I, uh, who here gets on an airplane? Oh, we all get on planes. Okay. I don't fly you, it personally, but yeah, I fly in it. Yeah. And you walk in, right? And you take your seat. You look at your, you know, okay, I'm, I'm B24. Yep. That sucks. It should have checked in earlier. And uh, you wait for your beverage service and your pretzels because they don't do peanuts anymore because everybody's allergic to them. Whatever. Um, so you're waiting for your pretzels and your beverage service. Think about how many people spent countless hours, I'd say tens of thousands of hours, on that plane to make it safe for you to fly. Just think of the testing that went into the pretzels. Yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah, I, that's, that's pretty you true, know. though. There is a fact in this show that, that blew my mind. It's, it's not a crazy fact, but it was in the moment that I heard it. was that, like, in the 50s that uh, a test pilot died, like, once a week or something yeah. like that. It was a crazy number. And, and it was a moment of perspective of, like, the only reason I make it to the other side is because all of those people did that back in 1950 to figure out how to make this thing work every time. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's selfless. It's courageous. It's, um, it's remarkable. And, you know, they do it for us so that we can go see grandma over Christmas. Yeah. You know, so I, I can fly home from college break, you know, so I can go and maybe go overseas and, and can, yeah. can continue spreading democracy to the, for, to the world. Well, that's what I mean by the heart of the show is that you highlight these people that have made these sacrifices, that do these things, that just fly under the radar, man, that we, t we, we take for granted because the world is so complicated and full of things and we yeah. focus on whatever we focus on that you forget that there's people like this doing this every day. We're going to turn to the audience in a second. There's one question that I'm really curious about, though, because you mentioned uh, in talking about them and how they process it. And like I said, is reading up on you, and I've said this many times, you've done a lot of uh, wild stuff, man, and I'm curious after... Uh, the multiple tours and fighting in MMA and now doing all these jobs. What does that do for your perspective and how you consume entertainment? Like I assume you watching a Peter Berg movie is like through a different lens than I do. Like it, it's gotta be a different experience, especially uh, cause you have real world ties to those real world experiences. So how do you one entertain and two, what is it like for you to watch stuff like that and see things like that? I have a real, I mean, sitting here for 30 minutes is going to prove difficult, you know, um, Okay, thank God. No, no, I'll talk to you You've forever. You've done great. You've done great. <laughs> it's hot out here. You're making me stand still for 30 minutes. That's so sorry. like that's incredible. It's just not my world. Um, you know, if you look, my perfect day. I'm up at sunrise. I'm immediately training, yeah. and I get back, take the kids to school, have breakfast, and then I go and I shoot for two or three hours. Body armor, running up and down hills. My long gun, pistols, rifles, carbines. Um, what do you guys call them? Assault rifles here. Whatever. Um, and then that's my morning, right? And then I go and I have lunch. I start working for a few hours, hang out with the kids after school. They start doing their activities, and I go and train again. That's my perfect day. Like if somebody's going to say, hey, what are you going to do when you retire? I'm like, well, that's it right there. I'll, I'll probably be a higher-level competitor with, uh, with my guns because already very few people can keep up. Now I'll just have a little extra time. Um, I'll skydive. I'll scuba dive. I'll be paddle boarding. You know, I'll be on horseback trying to figure out how I can spear a wild pig in Texas because they're like a plague right now, and we're trying to get rid heard of them. That. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of wild pigs over there. Yeah, so we find creative ways like hopping on a horseback with a javelin. Jesus Christ! That sounds cool. You, you legit? You do that for real? Yes. That's wild. No, it's not. It's cool, but it took a lot of work because. <laughs> You actually have to. Hang get on! <laughs> you can't be both cool and wild. You are right. You are a man on a horse, horse with, a, with a, a javelin hitting a, a, a boar wild boar or a that wants to that's kill you. That's why you just said wild boar. Yeah, they're wild. That's wild. They got a little tusk to them. Yeah, I know. They're like little knives. Yeah. That, that's wild. Yeah, we had to put like Kevlar on the horse's legs so they didn't get. Uh, yeah, horse armor. Yeah, horse armor. They've always we had could have done a whole talk on this, dude. Why are you bringing this up in the final throws before the audience Q and A? You've been uh, holding out horse no, armor for the whole conversation. Yeah, so I'm thoroughly disappointed. TV is not really like I don't have I don't have TV in my house. Yeah. Um, you guys stream this, right? Yeah, it's it's live. It's everywhere. Yeah, see that you could watch somewhere in our house somewhere. Yeah. but that's about it. 
Like, yeah. none of the kids have iPads. Like, you'd really? never... Really? The s- kids either, huh? No way, Jose. Yeah, man. Wow. I realize your name's Matt. I just meant that as an expression. No, it's all good. Okay, not racially sensitive. <laughs> I don't think anybody was confused. <laughs> Well, well, man, all right, well, you know what? We're going to, uh, I promised the audience some time for questions. I'm a man of my word. We're going to get to that. But before we do that, I'm going to say one last thing. Dude, this show is, I wrote it down, July 31st, 10 p.m. on Discovery. I just saw one episode. It, it is absolutely, uh, it's crazy, it's wild, it's it's entertaining, and it's also, it's amazing to highlight these these hardworking people, man, that make the country go. So good on you for that. Thanks, Thank man. you for this show. Thank you for your service, by the absolutely. way, man, for sure. Let's go ahead and let's get some questions from right. the folks here. We got Mike's in the room. First one right here, sir. Go for it. Oh, the guy that clapped for America. I like you already. All right, what do you got? Hello, Mr. Kennedy. My name's Earl, and I'm sure you heard about the Conor McGregor incident at the Barclays Center. Yeah. Do you think he can find redemption in the ring or outside the ring? Both. Um, I think a champion has to first live by an example. Um, a champion's not just having their belt. Um, I fought for two world titles, and I lost both of those title fights. So I've never been the champion, but I've tr- always tried to aspire to... to like live appropriately. I think Daniel Cormier is a great example of what a champion is supposed to look like. You know, he's treating people respectfully. You know, you don't see him in a hit and run with drugs against a pregnant woman. You know, like you don't see that out of Daniel Cormier. You see out of other champions. Um, Conor McGregor is a very talented fighter, a charismatic, brilliant, gifted pugilist. Um, I hope he can be the champion that the people need, um, not the one that Conor wants to be. Well said. Yeah. yeah. Great question. What was that? We got one more? Okay, we're going to do one more. It's coming from right here. Come on up. Hi. I have a question from Jamie online, and she wants What's to up, know. What's up, Jamie? <laughs> um, what like, occupation were you most excited for? Um, in the show or in my life? In the show. Okay. In the show. Oh, uh, that's a tough question, Jamie. So when, when you start measuring, okay, do I want to get – buried alive in an avalanche, burnt alive inside of the cockpit of a plane, take an R-22 helicopter and dunk it into the Arctic Ocean and make me swim to an iceberg and try to survive, get hit by a bull, get run over by a bull, hang out with a bunch of explosives um, on Camp Pendleton with the Marines that are legitimately trying to blow you up. Uh, it's a real tough decision to it's choose. Flip. Yeah, it's, it's like, flip. which one do I like most? Let me ask How much one kills me less? Let me let me take a thank you for that question. Let's do a flip on it. Which one were you the most apprehensive about? Um, I'm doing all of them, but yeah. that one scares the hell out of me. Like, what? what, what which one? It had to be one. There wasn't one where ahead of time I was like, "This is gonna suck." Yeah. What happened? Um, I guess in chronologically and ironically or coincidentally, um, I was buried in an avalanche first. And I was stuck in the avalanche for 30 minutes, right? You're like, you're frozen like this, frozen. And I had like smashed my head forward to create a small pocket of air that I could breathe out of. And the, the snow was like melting and then refreezing. So it was slowly creating like a cocoon, a melted glass around my face that there was no air in. And, you know, they were trying to find me. And 30 minutes later, they pull me out. Um, and after about 20 minutes, a drop of water hit my cheek. And I was like... I know what way up is like up is that way. And it was the most re- like saving grace of my mental faculties to just realize what gravity was doing. I was like, Oh, they're going to come from that direction and that direction safety yeah. kind of, well, that sounds like cool and sucks at the same time. Fast forward a couple of months and I'm an R22 fuselage helicopter hanging over the Arctic ocean and they're about to plunge me in there. And I know the water is 33 degrees. I can see chunks of ice floating by and um, the cold works its way into the, the, cre- the crevices that a coward has. And even though I think I'm a, like, I know what I've done when I've been blown up. I've been in a gunfight for three days. You know, I was one of the guys that was part of the task force that killed Zarqawi. Like, I think I'm a brave person, but cold can find its way, can find the coward in you. And like, there was a couple of times where I like looked that coward in the face and I was like, oh my God, I've seen you before. And I just don't want to see you right now because that, Water's cold, you know, and then whoosh, the water hits your balls, and you're like, that is cold, <laughs> you know, and then you can't breathe, and then you get out, finally the fuselage, and then you realize you forgot your safety bag, and the, fus- and the, and the helicopter's sinking, and you're like, I have to go and swim and get that, because if I get to that iceberg without my safety equipment, I will freeze to death, so... Whoosh, and there you go. I should have golfed. 
No, I know exactly what you mean. The other the other day, I left uh, and, and I left my sunglasses at my apartment, and I got like halfway to the train, and I was like, if I don't go back and get those sunglasses, it's right? It's just gonna be the worst yeah. day ever. Yeah, so right. I, if right I, here, we're Matt. the same. We're exactly. the same as what we yeah, are. Right here. Tim, yes. I get you. I. Dude, thank you, sir. Thank you so much My for pleasure. being here. I hope you had fun with us, I man. Uh, I'm going to remind the fine folks at home and those watching us, uh, July 31st, you're not going to believe, man, this is the tip of the iceberg, man, what he's talking about. Uh, July 31st, 10 p.m. on Discovery. Uh, Tim, thanks for sitting still with us for as long as you did. It was a real treat. Tim Kennedy, everybody, make some noise right here.